today on Brilliance Business TV, we have Christine Marsh, author, inspirational speaker and catalyst for change, founder of Prime Objectives. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pooler. We have a wonderful guest on the show today, the Christine Marsh, a really good friend of mine who I've known for a fair few years now. She's a very inspirational lady. I'm really looking forward to a conversation with her. We are streaming live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. We're also on the E360 TV network, going out to Apple, Fire, Android, Roku, and many, many more. We're also on USA Global Radio and Television Network. We're also on mspnewsglobal.com, and we're also on the Business Innovators Radio Network. So I'm really looking forward to having a conversation with Christine. Let's bring in our amazing guest today. Hey, Christine, welcome to Brilliance Business TV. Thank you so much, Mark, for this opportunity. Uh, that coverage is amazing. So the message out there is really my aim is to pass on as much knowledge, experience, tips and techniques to your audience. Um, I want to help. And that's basically my aim. They come first. Yes, I know you're a lady of service, Christine. Just share a little bit about yourself and what you do, Christine. The key thing is that um, I have wanted to put some of the knowledge in a more concrete form. So an author, I've actually written a book, Flashpoint Transformation, ready to jump or waiting to be pushed. And that's soon to be followed by a second book, Later Life's Choices, because the 50 plus, whether you're there or not yet, you're going to get there. And it's a growth market. And the zest for life is what I'm on about, Mark. Every single moment counts. I love that. And I have a copy of your book and I was going to show it today, but I've left it somewhere so I can't show my copy. But bring the copy of your book up, Christine. Uh, basically, the um, artwork is done of the Phoenix Rising. This is a local artist who's done it for me. And I just think it's beautiful. Fire is the transformational energy. And that's what I'm all about. And I know you've had a lot of success with the book as well and getting lots of great feedback as well. You have had a successful career spanning both operational and learning and development what obstacles did you face as a woman in a predominantly male environment without a university education? Uh, remember, I've got uh, quite a track record now, and I'm talking of 60s and 70s era where women had a very stereotype role. So really to break loose of that and believe I could offer corporate life some guidance, because to me, I'm not phased by how much money companies are turning over. It's just a matter of where you put the decimal point. A lot of things are the same or similar. And I love the differences. That's why I like go, sorry, going global, really, uh, different cultures, different points of views. But for me, it was predominantly male. And you have to earn respect. I don't ask for any uh, special compensations. Sometimes you feel you have to be a bit better to get heard. But um, I've never been shy, Mark, have I, coming forward? <laughs> 
you you are a very classy lady christine and i know you're all about serving people and it's all about the service and i like how you bring a little bit of spirituality into the business world which really makes sense as well in a really uh, productive and clear way to understand well i was born in india and for the first seven years of my life i had no formal education so I've always had a holistic view. I find it very strange as education, you get split into science or art. Leonardo da Vinci encompassed everything, were holistic beings. And I think it's a shame that spirituality was almost seen as a bit of a woo-woo area. And that is not where we are now. Much more uh, awareness of us as whole beings and I've traveled the world. I've actually lived with a shaman in Siberia, been into Egypt, been allowed into the king's chamber by myself. I can go on, Mark. People are universal. We all have our dreams. And the freedom that we have to explore those does vary around the world. I like that. And I just love your energy, Christine. You are such a, a great, great inspiration. And how do you view the current employment situation? I think it's in a huge state of flux at the moment. Um, corporate life, because I've actually been fortunate enough to work with some big names. Uh, the return on investment, the ROI, has been the driver, the tick box profit all that monetary gain. And I think what's happening now is with AI and everything coming in, we mustn't lose ourselves as people. And I balance the ROI with something called ROE. That's how I break it down for myself. And that's a return on my energy, my enthusiasm. Uh, what I bring as a human being you know, you, you can't duplicate that. That's your inner soul that you're expressing and that balancing act. So today, I think COVID was a huge milestone for us. Uh, we had time to reflect and perhaps look at what is of real value and importance to us. And I think the, the growth now of communities is, well, sorry, the way to go as far as I'm concerned having like-minded people that support each other. And okay, there's always the solo bit, but we really have to build this tribal support network. And that's really what I endeavor to do. I like that ROE, return on energy, because energy is so important. If you are in good energy, you're going to get great results. And if you're in low energy, the results are not going to be as good there. What has given you the greatest satisfaction when working with your clients? I think I've been fortunate, as I say. Uh, the clients that I've had have trusted me and used me over a long period of time. So I'm actually able to track the growth of the individuals I've worked with as well as the organisation. And if I go on to LinkedIn now and I see some of the really top positions being filled by people with good ethics, good values. And I was part of that nurturing stage of the embryo of their ambition. And they have picked it up and run with it. You know, what they've created has come from their energy. I would like to think that some of the tip bits or me sitting on their shoulders sometimes saying, oi, what are you doing? <laughs> Is it a value? Uh, it's just that little mind jogger. But to, to see people progress, because I had such a bumpy start, and I feel that nobody should be judged unless they've had the opportunity to learn. And there's so much raw talent out there at the moment that we're just not tapping into. Uh, so that really is my mission. That's a great mission, Christine. You must have plenty of dreams that you still want to turn into reality. Yeah. What yeah. dream do you still want to turn into reality, Christine? Right. Um, I want to get the message out there, Mark. I mean... OK, I haven't got a blog yet. I shall be doing that. Christine Marsh's flashpoints. Uh, so I want to get the communication going. I want to set up a podcast with guests. 
and I'm sure you'll be one of them at one stage. <laughs> we do a reverse there, Mark. Yeah, but, uh, you know, basically, I want to be talking to people. I have done uh, interviews with some high profile uh, stars, and I think TV fascinates me. I want to be on that couch on Good Morning Breakfast and finding out um, the ways I can get it out there. There's a magazine that is now looking at the more the mature ladies. And, uh, you know, I just think we've got fantastic role models, Dame Judy Dench, Helen Mirram. You know, you can go on and on. These women have picked it up and they don't give a so-and-so <laughs> basically about a wrinkled face. And, um, you know, th th we've got role models. I want to be one of those. Not want, Christine. You already are one of those, but you want to see more people to know of you, of being one of those. But, yes, you are definitely, definitely one of those. What would be the most important message you want our listeners to take away from this interview? Can I give you a formula for success that has helped me? Of course you can. Uh, right. So if your listeners would like to write down the letter S, for sugar, S, and then multiply that with the letter M, will equal another S. Now, for me, the first S is your skills. And as I said, people need the opportunity to learn. If I'm dealing with India and doing various interviews there, they are hungry to learn. I love working with that energy. And yet other cultures, that is repressed and that's sad. But the skills start with small steps. Don't be too harsh on yourself. You don't grow unless you try. And you're going to make mistakes, for goodness sake. That's what life's all about. But skill basis, build it. Nothing is wasted. Even if something goes a big flop and you think, oh, I made a right mess of that, you will have learned from it. Do something, take action. So build your skills base. May not always make sense the logic or how it flows, but please remember time is not linear. With us, we go in a circular and I think, am I making this mistake again? Have I not learned anything along the way? Um, but you will dip in, in and out. So the skills, build it, have your own portfolio, however tatty it looks, however unconnected it looks, I can assure you it all comes together at the right time. I love that, Christine. And Christine, I think we need to chat a little bit more about your book because we, we shared the cover and we, yeah. let's share with the listeners and the, the viewers a little bit about the book and what it shares. Well, coming back just to the formula, Mark, if I may, M stands for motivation, and that will fluctuate. I was not motivated to write a book because of being told I was stupid at the age of seven when I couldn't read. So your motivation level is not a constant state. So if I say at the moment my skills are eight, but my motivation is 10, my success rate is 80%. Go for it. So the building of skills is progress. Motivation, you have duff days. All of us do. And you think, I'm not getting anywhere. This isn't where I want to be. But be careful that you don't fall into the trap of the dark places. Pull yourself up. Increase that motivation. It's an inner driver. You can go and listen to me or anybody else. But if you don't take away, your own motivational energy, we're, we're kidding ourselves. And that will equal success. But what does success mean to you? That can be a whole range of things, but come back to your own values and Essex. So the, coming back to your question, Mark, can you repeat it? I, I do go off on one on occasion. <laughs> no, that's a great formula for success. And I like that. Um, the question was around your book. You've shared your cover but I think we just should share a little bit about the book what it's about who it's for well a lot of people thought with my vast experience I would be giving case study after case study I've done that I've held uh, the platform in conferences all around the world sharing business things but I wanted this to be a very personal journey and it comes down to communication 
and what a mess we make of that. Most of the conflict situation has been due to misunderstanding of what somebody said. So I just talk about black squiggles because wherever you're born, we have to put meaning into black squiggles, either in an alphabet or, you know, reflex or all kinds of things. Then you're really looking at that sharing, if you like, of learning and moving it on from there. So the background really was communication. And then I moved into the transformational element of fire. And the book, once you really focus on one thing, that's the F. The I is for intuition. We're born with info intuition. It gets sort of dampened down along the way. Oh, don't be silly. That doesn't make sense. Maybe not to them, but don't stop listening to your inner voice. The R stands for rekindling your dream. And I'm collecting stories of people who've just done that. Rekindling my dream was to pick up the paintbrush again. And I've just got so much satisfaction of rekindling that dream of art. But at the end of the day, the E stands for energization. We're talking about energy here, Mark, but do we actually put it into action? So the E is energization. Having listened to me and the beautiful uh, introduction from Mark, I'm there for you. You know, basically reach out to me. I'm more than willing to have um, an initial consultation with you. I'm interested in you as an individual and what you can contribute, contribute rather to society. But actually what you need is what matters to you. I love that. And I know you're about service, Christine, and really supporting people. I know people can get a copy of your book as well. What's the title of your book again? It's Flashpoint Transformation Life Choices. And Flashpoint has, Transformation Life Choices. Yeah, ready to jump or waiting to be pushed. But don't kid yourself, folks. Change is inevitable. Stress is manageable and misery is optional. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, I know you're offering a free consultation as well. For more information and to contact Christine, go to thechristinemarsh.com. That's thechristinemarsh.com, thechristinemarsh.com. Christine, who should reach out to you? Who do you want to chat to? Ages, it material. I have got whiz kids at 15, 16 with the future ahead of them. I'm in my 80s and I'm having more fun than I've ever had. But the second book will be Later Life's Choices because that is the growing population. Whether you like it or not, as I said, you're going to get there, folks. It, uh, that aging process is inevitable. So anybody that is at a crossroads of choices, reach out to me. And I think a lot of us are at crossroads, Christine. I might have to reach out to you there. For more information and to contact Christine, go to thechristinemarsh.com. Christine, we've been really good friends for, I can't even think how many years it's been now, but I remember we... Say, say that again, sorry. It's been great fun and I love you to bits, Mark, because you're a very special soul one and a friend I treasure. Yes, and I know you was a speaker at a, a meeting, a network meeting at a PSA event that we was at. Yeah. And we clicked there, there and then, and we was friends ever since. And I've interviewed you at the very beginning of my journey. I'm a bit later on in my journey, but it's always a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you for being such a great friend. Well, I just want to send all my love and best wishes and positive vibes to your audience. Um, you're, each and every one of you is unique and you're special. Use your talents. That's the gift you were given. Thank you so much for being my guest today, Christine. I've really enjoyed having a conversation with you. Thank you again and uh, look forward to hearing from your audience and getting to know people. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for a conversation with Christine Marsh. Conversations with leading experts in business. Until next time, bye for now.